You promised the best and worst stories from the Every Given Saturday tour this year, so let's hear them from Warner Robins, Georgia. That I did, Garrett, and I knew you wouldn't forget, so here we go. Right here to, to wrap up 2022, almost. I'm going to do the best story first. We had, we had a little internal debate here. Should we go negative or positive first? We're going to go positive first. So the date was October 22nd. I was in Eugene, Oregon. First visit ever to the great Pacific Northwest. And I went out to Oregon and I, I wanted to get to the Pac-12. So we got to the Pac-12. But I, I wanted to um, see both of those teams. It was UCLA versus Oregon. You guys remember this. It was a pretty good back and forth game. So anyway, I'm out there on a Friday night. This first part's not even the, the good part of the story. It's just a part of the story. I'm out there on Friday night. I had already been over at the facility earlier that day. Me and um, I think I was alone that day. We were doing some hits for CBS. So then you normally go back to your hotel room. Sometimes I'll go back over to the facility when coaches are free a little bit later in the night and I'll meet with them. So I was over at the facility Friday night talking to some of the Oregon coaches. I had them take me over to the stadium because I had never been in Autzen Stadium before. I always like to get that Friday night alone in the stadium video if I can. That's really fun. So anyway, that was, that was a nice precursor. And I thought that that would probably be the highlight of the week, right? And it was still a highlight of the week, but it wasn't the only highlight of the week. Game day arrives. And I'm at the stadium, we've already done all of our pregame hits. I'm totally done. I'm, I, I mean, I am the most blessed person in the world because all I have to do during games is just stand on the sideline and watch the game. It's great. So I go up the tunnel. UCLA is about to take the field. Now, let me, let me preface this. I know Dan Lanning. I've never met Chip Kelly in my life. I have never, to this point, to this point in time, I had never spoken to Chip Kelly in my life. I had never met him before. I had never spoken a single word to him. Never sent so much as a telegram back and forth with the guy. Here comes UCLA. Not to take the field for warm-ups. They're taking the field. Game's about to start. And so they're coming down the tunnel. It's a really, really long tunnel, so you can see him coming a mile away. So I've got the eye josh pulled out. I'm a film UCLA walk by. I put a lot of that on Instagram for you guys to see. So I'm filming... And Chip Kelly, about the time he gets close to me, he kind of signals for his team, just kind of go ahead without me. And he sort of diverts his path and he comes over to me. Unfortunately, I stopped recording at that point. So I have no clue what's about to happen. He leans in like he's about to tell me something. And I had no clue what was about to happen. I just know I've never met him before. And he leans in and he says, hey, I got something to tell you. Nothing perfect lasts forever except in your memory. And then he shook my hand and he walked away. If you're new to the show, you probably have no clue what that means. If you've watched or listened to this show for a long time, you may not remember what that means. But if you've paid extra close attention, you know I've told you a few times, one of my favorite movies is A River Runs Through It. My favorite movie poster, period, of all time, is A River Runs Through It. I don't care if you've never seen the movie. The poster alone for A River Runs Through It, just a picture of a guy fly fishing out in rural Montana. It's great. On that movie poster is the quote, nothing perfect lasts forever except in your memory. I had mentioned that quote on this show a few times. Chip Kelly had seen it somehow on the show. He had no clue he was going to see me that day. It's just somehow when he saw me as he was headed down the tunnel, that quote triggered in his mind and he walked over, gave it to me and then went on about his way jarred me for a second because I had to think to myself like, well, how, how did this just happen? So it wasn't until he was all the way out on the field that I realized, oh, oh no, wait, he must have heard me say that on the, and then I put two and two together. Hey, man, since then I've taught Chip Kelly a couple more times. So it's been great. But that little moment there, which I have not told until now, I haven't told anyone that story except Jesse and Colin, basically. Um, that was a classic moment. That was great. Cause that's still now forever. My favorite movie poster quote of all time and it was the one thing that Chip Kelly thought of when he saw me for the first time and spoke to me for the first time. So that was really cool. Uh, not nearly as fun a story was back in week one. And I have told even less people this story. Jesse and Colin, though, still know. Some of you may have noticed when I was doing the Cincinnati-Arkansas game, 
if you watch our coverage over on CBS Sports HQ on Saturdays, or if you follow me on Instagram, you may have noticed I was wearing sunglasses. And uh, that doesn't stand out too much. It's, it's still summer. It's the middle of the day. It, not crazier things have happened. People wear sunglasses. Now, you know, maybe not so much when they're doing a live shot, but people have worn sunglasses before. Well, I don't, on air at least. I, I've never worn sunglasses. Why was that? Well, here's what happened. All of a sudden, uh, inexplicably, like uh, two weeks before the season started, I started waking up in the morning. First thing I'll do, obviously, is you know take the protein and whatnot, and then I'll open my laptop, start to get to work. The illumination from my laptop was making me squint, like it was bright, and it it started getting precipitously worse day by day. And then all of a sudden, I couldn't go outside in the middle of the day, and like normally look around without squinting and without like shielding my eyes. And I got so sensitive to light, I eventually had to start wearing sunglasses. Then it was so bad, it was like overcast that morning in Fayetteville. But just the LED lights that uh, Greg Gelber uses, our, our crack production guy out on the road, I couldn't even bear the LED lights. And that's just what they use to illuminate your face. So I had to wear sunglasses. I had no clue what was happening. Also had blurry vision in one eye. So I have light sensitivity. Uh, partial blindness, had no clue why, was just trying to hide it. So I had to ask myself, what has changed about me over the past six months? And I narrowed it down to one thing. I had been drinking a lot of Star <clears throat> a Brands cold brew coffee in the can. Room temperature, of course. And I'd been chugging about half a dozen of them per day, uh, certainly more than the prescribed amount. Well, I realized hey, that's changed. I just started drinking these things recently. So I cut them. Cold turkey. Good for me, by the way. Uh, light sensitivity was gone within 48 hours. Vision totally rectified within 48 hours. And so the moral of the story, kids, is I will never drink a can of cold brew fill-in-the-blank brand coffee again in my life. Why? Because I enjoy being able to see and I enjoy not having to squint when someone turns the lights on. Those were the best and worst stories of the Every Given Saturday Tour this year. Told you they deliver. <laughs> Those aren't the only stories. Those are just the best. I, I should have said the best and worst that I can share. I, yeah, that's probably the way we should have arranged that. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. Make sure you like the video and please subscribe to the channel. Not just for me. That's how we keep this entire thing free.